Today's episode is brought to you by Hello Pillow. Head on over to hellopillow.com slash rogue, get up to $20 off per pillow, and the best part is sleep on it totally risk-free. You're gonna love it. You will. What do you think of gin? It's an old man drink that tastes like pine needles. Not a fan. Nothing about what you said sounds anything less than awesome. All right, well, uh, I'm not drinking it. <laughs> Fine, then we need an official taster of the gin fizz. Anyone in all of y'all, oh my goodness, it's Griffin, Griffin Ramsey. Ramsey. <laughs> Sounds like you need some help. All right, we're back at Parker Jazz Club with our favorite bartender, Trevor Fahrenbach, and special guest, Griffin Ramsey. Hey. So, Trevor, we are going to be making a gin fizz today. Not only are we making a gin fizz, we are making the Ramos gin fizz, which is the most famous of the gin fizzes. Uh, what's funny is I heard that, I'm like, the heck is that? And then I hear the words, the most famous of, and I'm like, I really don't know anything about a gin fizz. <laughs> a gin fizz is simply a drink that is combined with gin. Yep. Which you love. A little bit of lemon juice. Yep. An egg white. Yep. And that's about it. And what's special about the, the uh, Ramos? The Ramos gin fizz. Uh, so as Jason's favorite word has been over the modern rogue cocktail videos, apocryphal. apocryphal. We have an apocryphal, but mainly true story behind this drink. Henry Ramos, who was a preacher and bartender, owned a bar in New Orleans. And in 1888, he introduced this drink to us. The apocryphal part of this comes from how long it took to make the drink, which could take up to 32 minutes. He was a bartender and a preacher, so he wanted to make sure that people were not leaving his bar drunk. Okay, what's funny is I would love to believe, like, they're gonna show up, they're gonna order, and I'm like, really work it on. He's gonna yeah. be there any minute. It's gonna be great. And, You're gonna and love eventually it. people just give up, and, and he's like, man, that was 90 minutes sober. <laughs> well done. <laughs> the drink would take so long because he would just pass it down. Now, when you look in the history books, it will say a line of bartenders. It was more like children who were paid a dollar per shake. And it would go down a train of tw uh, 20 kids who would shake for a minute each, and then it would take that long to get the drink, and by that time, they'd probably so sobered up a little bit. Some sort of bartending sweatshop? <laughs> I, was, I was about to say, I mean, it sounds like child labor laws uh, are a thing. So, so how do we make it? So the hardest part about making a Ramos Gin Fizz really is the egg. Anytime you put an egg in a drink, I get nervous that I'm gonna get salmonella. I get nervous that a chicken's gonna come out of the drink, and then I'm gonna have to eat a chicken. The gin keeps it clean, though. And it's true. Dying. Is that science? <laughs> science? Sure, it's good enough for adjacent. me. Adjacent. Science adjacent. <laughs> the ratio is really easy. We're all just we're gonna be doing an ounce of everything except for the gin, which will be two ounces. Okay. So an ounce of simple syrup along with one egg white. That's just sugar dissolved in water. Yeah, and this is just a one to one, okay. which is just one part sugar, one part water. And then we're gonna do one ounce of lemon juice, one ounce of heavy whipping cream. Mm. I didn't know there was cream in this. Huh. And uh, this recipe often calls for uh, orange blossom water. It can be hard to find at times depending on where you live, but for a substitute, you can just grate an orange a few times over the drink and you're still gonna get that oil to, and that to effect. To put in the zest in there? Mm -hmm. or? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, not much at all. No, 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 no. I mean, you're getting the essential oils out of it, just like a swath when you would do it over like the old fashioned. Mm -hmm. Same kind of difference. The reason he would shake it for so long is to get that really heavy foam on top. It's a beautiful looking drink, especially in a tall glass. It will be two ounces of gin. Oh, and I do want to explain, there are different types of gin. You don't have to have pine needle gin. What is, what is this? This is Benham's Gin at a Sonoma, California. How much juniper and pine needle do you get out of that? I mean, it smells like hairspray. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens when you take the pine needles out. That's right. It does smell like hairspray. Yeah. That's, that's rave number five. I'm that's getting more Aquanet. Paul Mitchell. Aquanet. Paul <laughs> Mitchell. Yeah. Mm. Visible changes. Yeah. <laughs> With a younger drinking crowd, uh, they don't like juniper as much. They don't like pine needle as much. And you're starting to see gin, such as Benham's, coming out that is less juniper forward, more citrus forward. We've got a lot of juniper around here. You carve some of that, right? Well, I used the Eastern Red Cedar, which is like a cousin to the juniper, but I am allergic to the Mountain Cedar, which is juniper, and so I feel like this is like revenge. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, get it back. Now, to get a really good foam on this, you're, we're gonna start with a dry shake. I'm not gonna add any ice to this. It's just all the elements of the drink ready to go, but this is Modern Rogue. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. This. 
Should I stand back? Is that what that I means? Brought, just, I might. <laughs> reset the injury counter. That's what that means. Is that just giving it some more height? What's happening? Oh, <laughs> got it. So, okay. So, if I'm reading this right, what you want is a very consistent blend of everything. And the more gravity and the more kinetic action there is with everything sloshing back and forth, the more consistent it'll be. Is that right? Well, you could just say you want more air in it, too. Oh, shoot. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> I, did, I, I did that for a goldfish once. I, I shook up water in a bottle and poured it like, here's oxygen. I buddy. thought you meant this was happening to the goldfish. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? So you want to shake this for about 20 to 30 seconds. I really thought you were going to say minutes, and I thought, well. <laughs> You're like, I could hire some orphans. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ooh. You can already tell the foam's coming out here. And now, we're gonna add ice to it, shake it again. Cap this again. Again, you're just gonna put more air into it and you're gonna break up the proteins in the drink. Got it. So. You learned that on the streets. <laughs> funny thing is, this thing is really not meant to shake in, but it's funny, it attracts a, uh, a lot of looks when I do it on a busy night. So have you ever tried to shake it for as long as he did traditionally, like the 30 minutes? Oh, hell no, I don't have that much time. I get people mad at me for getting a Jack and Coke to them six minutes later, let alone something like this. Well, you should really work on getting that down to about three or four. <laughs> yeah, <there it> is. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna double strain this. So this is the Hawthorne strainer along with a fine mesh strainer. What are we straining out of it? The ice chips. Oh, okay. It's like a glass of milk. Mm-hmm. That is not what I expected it to look like. Well, we're not done yet, Jason. <laughs> this is the part where I realized I've never even seen a gin fizz before. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the fizz comes in. You can use any carbonated water. I'm using Austin's own Waterloo Original, which I really like. And you're gonna slowly add it. You don't wanna pour it all in at once. And if you tap it at the bottom, it'll stabilize it. The science behind that, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but traditionally, you want a nice oh, hockey you, puck wow, that sits oh, at the top. Oh, that's nice. No that's garnish. Great. Oh, and it just kind of clings to the edge there. And you'll see as it starts to kind of settle, you'll have that nice collar of foam that sits on top. So how do you properly drink this? Do you take a moment and let the foam go down? Yeah, it's kind of like, almost like a Guinness beer. You want to let it sit, get its collar on the top. After it sets, then you're going to want to take a drink because it is still reacting with the soda water. And I suppose in alignment with the temperance message, this is a great way to keep somebody from getting too blitz too fast as if they have to wait for the foam to go away. Yet they've just pissed everyone else off in the bar because they ordered one and it took forever to get the other people's drinks out. And as a rule of thumb, as we go back to etiquette, don't order this on a Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so to recap, we take the egg white, an ounce of simple syrup, an ounce of lemon juice, an ounce of heavy whipped cream. One dash of orange blossom water or grated orange. Two ounces of gin and the rest of the uh, sparkling water. Mm -hmm. So I'm not getting much on the aromatics right here, but I guess that's by design. It's gonna be more texture than anything with the egg white. It's like a got fizz ad. Yeah, I, <laughs> got fizz. I would have thought for sure that it would feel heavy knowing that there's whipped cream and eggs in there, but the gin really does kind of give it a, a light, airy, I don't know, bouquet or a taste bouquet. So it lives up to its name. It feels really like crisp. I wouldn't fresh. have expected that given how heavy the ingredients are, but you, that's 100%. I, I think a big part of it is that experience of the club soda, you know, getting everything aerated and bubbly. And depending on what carbonated water you use, it can have a huge effect on the drink. If you use, say, something like a, a sparkling mineral water, mm -hmm. it's gonna change the entire complexity of that drink, as I, opposed to just having club soda. How did it land for you, Griffin? It's good, it's actually kind of almost, not floral, but I, the lemon makes it kind of like a flowery drink. It, it does feel strange. like a, uh, a early summer, late spring kind of drink, right? Yeah, and I, yeah, it's not, maybe I can't taste the egg, but it almost gives me like this feeling that I can, or it's like changing the flavor in some but way. But in the egg, if I understand correctly, is mainly there just to create the foam? It creates the foam, it also helps combine the drink a little bit better. Well, and the drink itself has a texture, they all have like, has kind of like a texture play between the foam and then the liquid at the bottom. Oh, no, that's good stuff. You I like, like it? it? Yeah, it's super refreshing. What is the number one thing that has influenced your sleep 
in your entire life. You know this answer. You know it's my hollow pillow. I can't I can't help it. It's it's everything from the weight of it to the texture of it to the sound it makes as I rub my face on its buckwheat goodness. You can hug it and it can weigh you down at night. There's nothing I don't love about my hollow pillow. I want to latch on to something there that is very important. Rub your face on this buckwheat goodness. Yeah, next to the uh, defeat of Frederick Krueger, the hollow pillow has been the greatest thing to happen did to my sleeping habit. Did you call him Frederick Krueger? I'm trying to treat the man wait, with wait, some respect. How did he earn such respect? Also, I don't understand how copyright strikes work, <laughs> so. Everybody should have the smug satisfaction that comes from the full night of sleep that you get with the world's best pillow. I sleep like a baby now, and it is all thanks to hollowpillow.com forward slash rogue. Get up to $20 off when you order multiple hollow pillows and try them risk-free for 60 days. Yeah, dude, you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. You're gonna say we're right. You're welcome. Hot yeah. It's a magical pillow full of buckwheat husks, which I'm pretty sure are harvested from some sort of fairy land where they take the husk from these buckwheat people, yep. rip their skin. Nope, not going there. That just, <laughs> that just went into Jason yeah, territory. Up until, uh... Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly I was just subjugating these entire people for their chitinous flesh, <laughs> shoving it into pillows.